The income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement are all connected in one way or another. All of the statements together show the financial position of a business. The income statement shows how much profit the business made. The balance sheet shows the assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. And the cash flow statement shows how much cash the business produced, invested, and raised. Investors should know how these three statements connect to each other if they want to find excellent investments on their own. Let's see how they connect with an example. Say a guy named Tim starts a car company and calls it Tim's Cars. It's the end of Tim's Cars' second year of operations, so they already have financial statements from the first year and now the current year. Tim's Cars is a new and small company so it only sells one car in the whole year. A customer buys a car from the company for $100,000. On the income statement, this $100,000 is recorded as revenue. After the revenue, you subtract the costs of goods sold, which for this car is $70,000. So, the gross profit is $30,000 on the car that was sold. After subtracting the selling, general, and administrative expenses of $25,000, Tim is left with a net income or profit of $5,000. This is the end of the income statement. Now, this $5,000 profit is the start of the cash flow statement. To see how much actual cash the business produced and not just how much the accounting profit was, you have to add back non-cash charges. The costs of goods sold on the income statement includes depreciation and amortization expenses, which are considered non-cash charges. For Tim's cars, out of the $70,000 in costs of goods sold, 20% is from depreciation and amortization. So, 20% of $70,000 is $14,000. This $14,000 is added to the profit of $5,000, which gives us $19,000. Now we have to add back the changes in current assets and current liabilities, otherwise known as changes in working capital. We can look at the balance sheet to see the changes in working capital. Accounts receivable is a current asset, and it was $10,000 the year before. Inventory is also a current asset, and it was $40,000 the year before. The current assets, accounts receivable, and inventory increased from the year before. Accounts receivable increased to $15,000, and the inventory increased to 45000 The accounts receivable increased by 5000 and the inventory increased by 5000 from the year before. Since these assets increased, they have to be subtracted from the $19,000. This is because the $5,000 in accounts receivable is an actual cash, and the $5,000 increase in inventory is because Tim's cars spent $5,000 more to produce that inventory. 
The total change in current assets is $10,000. Now, we can find the change in current liabilities. Current liabilities for Tim's cars are the accounts payable and the current portion of debt payments. Accounts payable was $5,000 the year before and the current portion of debt payments was $1,000. Accounts payable for the current year increased to $7,000 and the current portion of debt payments stayed the same at $1,000. The accounts payable for Tim's cars increased by $2,000 from the year before and the current portion of debt payments didn't change. Because accounts payable lets Tim's cars keep cash for a certain amount of time, you add the positive change in accounts payable to the operating cash flow so far. So, the $19,000 minus the $10,000 change in current assets plus the $2,000 change in current liabilities gives Tim's cars an operating cash flow of $11,000 for the year. After the operating cash flow section, there's the investing cash flow section. Tim's cars only spent cash on property, plant, and equipment. Tim's cars spent $4,500 on replacing old and worn out computer equipment and tools. They also spent $4,500 on additional computers and tools they didn't have before because the business is growing and they needed more equipment. So, the total spent on property, plant, and equipment was $9,000 in the year. Back to the balance sheet, the non-current assets of property, plant, and equipment totaled $50,000 the year before. Since $4,500 was spent replacing old equipment, Tim's cars didn't lose or gain any non-current assets on this new equipment. However, because Tim's cars spent $4,500 on additional equipment they didn't have before, the property, plant, and equipment section would increase by $4,500. After the investing section of the cash flow statement, there's the financing section. Tim's cars issued $5,000 worth of stock in their business for the year. So, the business received $5,000 in cash from issuing stock. Tim's cars also took on $5,000 in long-term debt in the form of a loan and therefore they received $5,000 in cash. Because the debt has to be repaid, $5,000 will be added to the long-term debt in the long-term liabilities section of the balance sheet. The long-term debt Tim's cars already has is $10,000. So now they have $15,000 in long-term debt. From issuing stock and taking on debt, Tim's cars received $10,000 from financing activities in the year. The total cash the business received in the year is $11,000 from operating cash flow minus $9,000 in investing cash flow plus $10,000 in financing cash flow. So, the total cash the business got in the year was $12,000. Tim's cars had $10,000 in cash on the balance sheet last year. So $12,000 plus $10,000 shows that Tim's cars 
has $22,000 in cash on the balance sheet. Now that there is a completed balance sheet for the year, we can determine the owner's equity. The total of the current assets is $82,000, and the total of the non-current assets is $54,500. So the total of the assets for Tim's cars is $136,500. The total of the current liabilities is $8,000 and the total of the non-current liabilities is $15,000. So the total of the liabilities for Tim's cars is $23,000. Assets minus liabilities always equals owner's equity. So $136,500 minus $23,000 gives an owner's equity value of $113,500. This is the money that the stockholders of Tim's cars should be entitled to if the business went bankrupt. As you can see, the three financial statements fit together to show how the money a business makes and raises connect to the assets and liabilities on the balance sheet. Obviously, businesses on the stock market are certainly more complicated than Tim's cars, but every business's financial statements can be linked in the same way. I hope this was helpful. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Comment any thoughts you have down below, and I'll see you again next time.